Hi everyone, it's Miss Cavo. I hope you're doing well today. Um, this is my first virtual learning lesson that I'm attempting to complete with Screencast-O-Matic, so I hope you're, you all bear with me. Um, I wanted to utilize this platform to demonstrate what it looks like to analyze the very first paragraph of the novella and how to break it down sentence by sentence and determine setting. That was something that I noticed many of you struggled with when it came to completing that very first focus section of study guide number one. Um, so I just wanted to create a follow up activity so that you guys could really show or demonstrate that you are able to develop setting within literature or identify setting within literature. So by the end of this activity, you should be able to identify what determines setting, identify a setting within your world in which to describe, and mimic the author's writing by developing your own original paragraph, which details the setting. And I'm going to walk you through step by step and show you how to do this. So first, let's talk about what determines or what builds setting. So first of all, one of the easiest ways to determine setting is identifying a time and a place as well as a location and when I bring you to the the screen that holds the first paragraph of the of the text you'll see that Steinbeck the author does exactly that right off the bat he identifies a time a place and a location but then it gets a little bit more in depth and he provides us with uh, particular descriptions that fall under the the categories of adjectives as well as sensory details. And when he pieces together this information for us, we eventually should be able to develop a particular tone or an emotion. And um, so, for instance, if you're describing a room that is a particular type of blue, um, which I'm going to use in my example uh, later today, you'll notice that um, I connect the, the, the color of the room, which is blue, to that feeling, which is calmness. Um, so we're going to kind of break down Steinbeck's literature first to determine what type of tone is he developing through his word choice. And so that's the first task I'm going to just demonstrate for you. Break down the literature sentence by sentence. What does he do to describe the setting? So this is the worksheet that you should have in Google Classroom and it has your instructions for the um, specific assignment. But first, before you even look at the instructions, I just want you to watch this video and pay attention to how I break down his literature. So we're gonna do it sentence by sentence. He writes, a few miles south of Soledad, the Salinas River drops in close to the hillside bank and runs deep and green. So you should be able to identify the location. South of Soledad and the Salinas River. So when you go and actually begin to type your own literature and detail your own setting of your choice, the very first, first sentence should detail location. Now let's take a look at the second sentence. I'm gonna highlight it. He writes, the water is warm too for it has slipped twinkling over the yellow sands in the sunlight before reaching the narrow pool. So there are two particular words that jump out to me in this sentence. The first one is warm, which describes temperature. And the second word that jumps out at me is the word twinkling. And the twinkling is in reference to how the water looks as it um, almost crawls over the sand and it says that it's a narrow pool which is a description of the fact that it's the water is shallow so when you think of pools of water or bodies of water that might be twinkling this gives me the sense that the the twinkling water is calm um I guess if you were to describe water uh, that is opposite of calm, you might say um, that the water is rambunctious or 
rolling over rocks. So the emotion or the tone that Steinbeck is trying to depict in this particular sentence is the beginning of the calmness because of the particular word choice of twinkling, narrow, shallow pools, and warm water. So here, for your guided instructions, I just want you to see what you're going to do eventually. It says, the second sentence of your own literature should detail temperature. Now we're going to take a look at sentence three, which is a little bit longer. Some of your vocabulary words will come into play. You need to know, for instance, what recumbent means in order to have an understanding of what the emotion is or what the tone is that the author is continuing to try to elicit. So it says, on one side of the river, the golden foothill slopes curve up to the strong and rocky Gabalon Mountains, but on the valley side, the water, the water, the water is lined with trees, willows fresh and green with every spring, carrying in their lower leaf junctures the debris of the winter's flooding, and sycamores with mottled white recumbent limbs and branches that arch over the pool. So this third sentence. Specific, oops, excuse me. This third sentence specifically details what an individual would see on the left and right of the room or east and west of this location. And I know that because it says on one side of the river are the mountains. And this is what the mountains look like. It uses words like fresh and green. And then on the other side, are sandy banks. Um, let's see, recumbent, if you can recall, means something that is lying down. And if an object or a person or a thing is lying down, then you might tend to conjure up the thought or the image that this item is relaxing. So if you have recumbent limbs and branches arching over the pool, it's not depicting a scene of something that has been harassed, so to speak. Um, it's not heavily damaged. It's not something that's been built upon. We are obviously within an, a relaxing aspect of nature. Now let's look at the last sentence, or the last two. On the sandy bank under the trees, the leaves lie deep and so crisp that a, litter, a lizard makes a great skittering if he runs among them. Rabbits come out of the brush to sit on the sand in the evening, and the damp flats are covered with the night tracks of coons and with the spread pads of dogs from the ranches and with the split wedge tracks of deer that come to drink in the dark. So in this very last, in these last two sentences, the author is really bringing in the notion of, again, how this area is surrounded by nature, and it's so quiet that you can hear a crisp lizard skitter across a sandy bank and you can see damp flats of night tracks of raccoons, or you could see the pads of dogs from the ranches. And so not only is the author relying on adjectives heavily within this entire paragraph, the author is relying on sensory details by specifically detailing what the individual should be able to see, what the individual should be able to hear, what the individual should be able to feel when he refers to the temperature, he's referring to what someone can feel. So those are the sensory details as well as adjectives that we can detect are present within this literature. So I'm gonna allow you to, I'm gonna end this segment. And in the next segment, I will discuss um, how you can go about and actually identify a place within your space and then write about it in a similar way as to this author did.